What up African world, it's Home Team here, and welcome back to another video of A Closer Look, a series where I take a closer look at African peoples and the diaspora from around the world. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at Afro-Panamanians. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. Also, stay tuned with a word from my sponsors. Hello, my name is Howard Dorsey. I'm 54 years old. I'm here to talk about my uh, experience with herbal results. Um, I was getting sick, so I, I went to the doctor and they told me that um, my blood pressure was high, my cholesterol was borderline or high, so I was very sick. You know, I thought I was, sometimes I thought I was dying at, at some point. And uh, I ordered a bottle of olive leaf extract. This is, this is how the bottle comes in. And within the first probably week and a half, two weeks, I checked my blood pressure and it was back down to normal. It was like 120 over 80. And my cholesterol went down to uh, 125. You know, I definitely believe that olive leaf extract from Herbal Results saved my life. And I, that's real. I mean, I, I, I and I recommend it to everyone in my family, my friends, and we've seen a lot of results in that in that manner as well. Purchase now at herbalresults.net. To begin, this video is intended to be a general outline of Afro-Panamanian history. Please keep in mind that one video cannot encapsulate the full scope of their history. That being said, let's begin. Panama is a Spanish-speaking Central American country located on what's known as the Isthmus of Panama, a narrow strip of land that connects North and South America. Historically, it's been a region of political importance because of its geographic location. The population is estimated to be around 4 million people. The history of Afro-Panamanians is very diverse. Later, we'll learn that Afro-Panamanians descend not only from various African ethnic groups of West and Central Africa, but from Afro-descended peoples around the Caribbean. Like other regions in the Caribbean and South America, Afro-Panamanians are descended from enslaved Africans brought to Panama via Spanish colonists. Scholars disagree on the exact dates, but the early 16th century seems to be a common theme. In Panama, slavery was not linked as in other regions of the Americas to plantation life. Most slaves were brought to Panama to work in the mining industry by far the most important economic resource of colonial Panama. Use of slaves maximized the profits of Spaniards in the mines of Veracruz, Cocul, and Concepcion. Black slaves were also used as a labor force to build cities, towns, roads, churches, and monasteries, and as domestic servants. Enslaved Africans also served as conquistadors like in other regions throughout South America, one of them was actually remembered by name. We do have the name, however, of another African-born slave who fought in Central America. Juan Bardales participated in the conquest of Panama and Honduras, for which services he was granted his freedom and later a modest pension. We don't know how many African-born conquistadors were in Panama, but according to scholar Matthew Restall, Wherever Spaniards set foot in the Americas as members of conquest companies, they were accompanied by black conquistadors. Some Afro-Panamanians did not just settle for an enslaved life. There were many maroon settlements established by the ancestors of Afro-Panamanians. The severe conditions experienced by the enslaved provoked several insurrections and the formation of numerous palenques. By 1533, it was estimated that there were approximately 800 Maroons in Panama. Among the most famous Maroon leaders, documents mention Filipilo and Bayano or Valano. King Bayano, as he was known by the Spanish, was undoubtedly the most successful African-born leader of Panama in the 16th century. He beat the Spanish on several occasions. It was only deception that caused his eventual defeat. However, the Spanish honored his bravery, sending him to Spain to live as a free man. In Panama, a dam, a valley, and a river bear his name. As mentioned previously, Afro-Panamanians have a very diverse background. 
Afro-Panamanians can be divided into two major groups, those who landed in Panama as slaves in the 16th century and those who migrated involuntarily or voluntarily to work on different projects in the 19th century. The former are commonly known as Afro-Colonials and the latter as West Indians, Afro-Antillians, Criollos or Antillianos. The California Gold Rush in 1849 started the second wave of Afro-descended people into Panama, known today as the Afro-Antillians. In 1850, the construction of the Panamanian Railroad saw the hiring of Afro-descended people across the Caribbean. When construction ended in 1855, thousands of Afro-Antillians stayed in Panama. Another rush of Afro-Antillians into Panama began with the construction of the Panama Canal. Thousands of workers across the Caribbean began work in Panama, contributing to the Afro-Panamanian population. In general, the influx of the Afro-Antillian population did cause some problems or infighting, if you will. But as a whole, efforts to mend those differences and adopt a unified Afro-Panamanian identity have become less difficult. Panama has officially embraced its cultural diversity and has credited Afro-Panamanians for creating aspects of its overall culture. Given the diversity of the Afro-Panamanian community, its cultural expression naturally reflected that. For Afro-Panamanians, cultural connections with other Latin American and particularly Caribbean African diaspora populations are strong and include music, reggae, reggaeton, calypso, jazz, among others, dance, architecture, and religion. Although not commonly known, the Rastafarian movement is present in Panama. Music plays an important role in Panamanian culture, salsa, reggae, and cumbia being very popular. Panamanian Carnival and the Festival of the Black Christ of Portobello are major events for the Afro-Panamanian people and Panama as a whole. The Festival of the Black Christ of Portobello is a very special occasion for Afro-Panamanians as they not only celebrate their Catholic faith, but also their Afro-Panamanian identity. The residents of Portobello even call themselves the Congos. According to one theologian, the celebration is more than a religious function. It's a form of protest against Spanish colonialism. Well, I'm all out, guys. I'm hoping you guys were able to learn a little more about Afro-Panamanians. If you like these videos and would like to help in this continued production, Consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.